This tutorial video is going to go over how to draw uh, organic compounds from one from the ane, one from the ene, and one from the ine family using all three potential drawing methods. Uh, so my first example is going to be my ane example, butane. Uh, first, I want to make sure I know the count of carbons and hydrogen. But, uh, but tells me that there must be four carbons in this molecule. Uh, the ending is ane, which tells me that there are no double or triple bonds, all single bonds. Okay? Now, all anes follow the pattern of CnH2 and plus 2. So I can quickly predict the uh, hydrogen count before I even draw this out. Okay? Because it's an ane, the hydrogen has to have double the carbon count plus 2. So four, uh, double 4 is 8 plus two more would be 10. Uh, so the structural formula is the biggest, longest way to draw this. Uh, I have to show all the bonds. So our four carbons are going to show up uh, all connected together. Now I'm not using Vesper theory. I'm not drawing the proper bond angles. I'm just showing the proper, uh, the sequence of connections. Okay. Now I'm going to use bonding capacity to fill up each of the carbon with its four bonds with hydrogen. And I know for sure there's no way there's a double or triple because of the aim. So our N carbon is missing three more bonds. So there must be three H's attached to that N carbon. The next carbon over from the left is short two bonds to have uh, four bonds and an octet of electrons around that carbon. The next carbon is also short two bonds, so I'll put two more H's there. And our far right carbon has one bond already, carbon to carbon bond, and it needs three more H's. And that works out to be all eight of our H's. Now the condensed formula uh, were created because that's a, a pain to write everything out. Okay. In the condensed, I'm going to go car by carbon by carbon and summarize how many atoms are around it. So I'll start with the very first carbon. I'll make that red so you know which one I'm talking about. And next to that carbon is an H above it, an H to the left, and an H below it. There are three H's. Okay. And I'm not going to draw those bonds. We know they're all... Uh, single bonds because of how hydrogen bonds. We'll move to the next carbon, and there's one H above, one H below, two H's, and I'll write that next. Uh, we'll move to the third H, uh, third carbon, and that also has two H's, one above, one below. And last, I'll do the most right-hand carbon, and there's three H's, one up, one right, one down. So that's a condensed. Uh, structure. Now in my headings, I went structural condensed line. I left out the word diagram. So structural diagram, condensed diagram, line diagram. Line is the simplest to write. My technique for writing these properly is I realize how many carbons I need, which is four. And when I drop the pen, I start my count of four. So one, two, three, Four. Now I'm zigging and zagging and I'm kind of matching the correct bond angles. I'm not doing straight lines because uh, the carbons are not straight. Okay. And that is the line structure for carbon, for uh, butane. Okay. The end of each of those uh, line segments is a carbon and would use bonding capacity to know how many hydrogen come off. You do not draw C's and H's connected together in line structures. Okay. Just to go back and give a visual of where the carbons are, I'm going to pick a different color because this is now part of the answer, but I'm going to circle the end of all my line segments. Okay. And that pops out four circles, the fact that there are four carbons, that this is a butane. Second example is going to be a but1ene. So another four carbon long example, we have the same butte. The hydrogen count now is going to be a, a lower ratio. 
because the ene family follows the pattern CNH2N. The double bond removes the plus two. So our butene is going to have eight hydrogen, double the carbon count. So we'll do the structural formula first. Four carbons. Like above, I'm not doing the right bond angles. I'm just figuring out the connection of molecules. Okay. Uh, next, we see a one ene. So that's telling us our very first bond has a double bond, has a carbon-carbon double bond. Now, I could draw this from either side. I always put a star to remind me or my students uh, what side I started counting on. So I'm going to arbitrarily pick the left. So my bonds would be, there's my first carbon-carbon bond, there's my second, and there's my third. So I need to double up the very first carbon-carbon bond. Okay. Okay. Make note that I'm not counting the carbons, I'm counting the carbon-carbon bonds. Now I use bonding capacity to fill in the rest of uh, the bonding capacity in carbon. My very first carbon, Again, I will make the first one red. Uh, has two bonds already, so it needs a third and a fourth. Our next carbon already has three bonds, a double on one side, a single on the other, so it needs one more. It didn't matter whether I went above or below as long as I have the right connection. Again, I'm not drawing the proper bond angles. Our next carbon is short two bonds to get its four, and our N carbon needs three more. And if I'd done everything right, that'd be H. I tend not to even count the hydrogens as I add them in, but it's not a bad thing to do as a double check. Now we're going to see a slightly different pattern than condensed formula. Before with Ames, we see Three, uh, CH3 at the end and CH2 is in the middle. We're going to be missing some hydrogen around the double bond. Okay. That missing hydrogen is coming from the fact that our ames are saturated and our enes and later our ions are unsaturated. They're not filled with hydrogen. There's not the maximum amount of hydrogen, so it's unsaturated with respect to hydrogen. So our very first carbon has two H's around it, not the three like a saturated molecule would have. Our next carbon only has one hydrogen next to it, and then we have the full amount of hydrogen at the end. Okay. There's our unsaturated lack of the maximal amount of hydrogen in our molecule. Okay. Uh, line structure, four carbons. I'm going to do the same type of line segment, drop my pen and go one, two, three, four, lift. Uh, the difference being we've got a double bond in the first bond position. Now our line segments just show bonds. This is where our first bond would be, that would be our second bond, and this is our third bond. The H's are not drawn in when they're connected to carbon, and I'm going to put another line segment at the very beginning. Okay? Those red numbers are not part of the answer. So that's our, our blue line diagram. Now I'm not showing the perfect bond angles, you're not going to get assessed on those. Um, so realize when you look at answer keys, uh, they often are drawn with the proper angles. Last example, propyne, something with a triple bond. Uh, we have a prop instead of a but this time, so we have three carbon. Now our hydrogen count we can get from our trend of our ene family when there's, sorry, our ion family when there's just one triple bond. So it's going to be CNH2N and we're going to take two hydrogen off compared to an ene to add in that extra bond. So our, we'll take three carbon, double it to six and take two off. There's only four H's. Now, I didn't put a number there. 
is not probe one iron or two iron or three iron. There's no number, so it must mean there's only one possibility, and that was and that number was dropped. So let's see. There's three carbons. One, two, three. I've got to put a double bond, a triple bond, and no matter where I put it, it's going to be at the end of the molecule, and that's why no number was put in. Okay, I'll pick the other side just to show counting from the right-hand side. Okay, but a student could have just as easily counted from the left. Okay, you'd get mirror images of each other; they would both be the same molecule. So I'll put in a second and a third bond, make that first bond thicker. So it's easy to see. So there's my triple bond in the one position. Uh, now I just need to fill in my H's. Okay. Where I started counting, I started on the right this time. That red carbon has three bonds already, so it only needs one more. Now I am going to the right. Uh, I know when you have two bonds around a carbon, it's going to be a linear molecule. Okay? You're not tested on that, but you will see that in a lot of answer keys up being straight. Our middle carbon has four bonds already, a triple on one side, a single on the other. So I don't need any H's there. Our last carbon only has one bond, and that's where the last three H's go. Okay. So that's propine. Uh, condensed. Yeah, I'm going to condense it in the exact same order it's written. So our very uh, left-hand carbon has three H's. Our middle carbon has no H's around it, so nothing to write in. And our last carbon has one H. Okay. And again, it's this lack of uh, the maximum amount of hydrogen uh, above those greened underlying carbon where we have our unsaturated part of our molecule. Line structure, three carbons, one, two, three, lift. Okay. And then we have uh, three bonds on the left-hand side. So I'm going to put three line segments in that very first position. This is how I draw it most of the time. This is what I told you. I would take on a quiz question. Uh, it doesn't show the proper bond angle. So what you'll see sometimes is the fact that that middle carbon is going to be straight because there's only two bonds around it with no lone pairs. This is Chem 20 Vesper theory. Uh, this is actually straight throughout the middle of the molecule. So you would often see it drawn uh, more like that. Okay where this is your first bond, sorry, that's actually your second, there's your first bond, there's your second bond, your three carbons would be one at the end of those line segments, one in the middle, and one at the very end.